We're now live. Hello, Your Holiness. It's so nice to be with you. We're so happy to have you here today and so very grateful to hear your perspective and your philosophies on the world. I have some questions here mm -hmm. that we're uh, looking at, taken from young people, old people all over the world from social media that we've asked to give us uh, their thoughts and their questions about humanity mm -hmm. that they would like to ask you. May I begin? Yes. Bridget Wilson, she asked, how do you help young people address issues of poor self-esteem, managing eating disorders, addiction, self-harm, and suicide? Basically, uh, I have sort of view our sort of environment or the society's way of life. I feel it's too much materialistic life, too materialistic culture. And then most important in our education system, uh, not much talk about our inner value. So in spite of basic human nature, according to scientists, more compassionate. Uh, compassion is part of our life, hmm? not cultivated from birth, that's there. But existing our education system is a, um, very much oriented about external values. So I think society, our generation, who come through that kind of education, then eventually create more materialistic life, materialistic with materialistic culture. So this, I, I feel, maybe wrong. <laughs> I cannot say my view, my, my view is 100% right. I don't know. That's each sort of young people, you have to check or investigate according to their own experiences. Now, these, uh, this problem is, I think, due to lack of uh, the ability about uh, compassionate feeling, thought, too much self-centered. Then life not free from problem. Problem always there, but you see your mental attitude is the key factor. Your mental attitude is sound with self-confidence and foresightedness. But then, you see, this problem, you see, uh, of course, the, on the surface of our mind or emotion, yes, we feel uncomfortable or something. But deeper level, we have the ability to keep Gone. So, so actually, the youth, young people like you, I think the future uh, is on your shoulder, not my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> now I ready to say goodbye, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so, so future, you see, uh, future depend on our younger generation's shoulder. And then another thing is, past is. Nobody can change. Future yet to come. So there is possibility to change. So existing environment, I feel uh, unhealthy. So we, younger generation, have to create more healthy environment. Through that way, our coming generation, future generation, will be more, I'll say the complete sort of, complete sort of th th thinking of a person. That me I mean physical comfort from material facility, mental comfort from our inner sort of strength. That's mainly compassion, as I mentioned earlier. 
So our beautiful brain and warm heartedness must combine. Then, you see, that person uh, can be very happy, calm, and no need relying on drugs or some other things. So then, uh, I think when you show more sense of concern of others' well-being, then you also you see, get the feeling, oh, I am something useful to others. That brings more self-confidence and uh, meaningful life. Otherwise, remain lonely. And look here, you cannot trust. Look here, cannot trust. Then you yourself sometimes feel helpless, discouraged. And then answer is suicide. <laughs> I understand. So what you're saying is that caring for others and having compassion, oh. it gives you a sense of purpose. That's right. Right. That's right. So it helps you to feel less alone. That's right. And alienated huh? because you know that we all belong together. That's right. That's right. Basically, we are social animals. So individual's future entirely depend on the rest of the community. No matter how sort of intelligent, how sort of rich, but in so empty place, remain lonely. I think even one week, very difficult. <laughs> so our very life, you see, depend on rest of the community. Now, today, the reality of today's world, heavily interdependent, interconnectedness. So we need a sense of oneness of humanity. Think other people. Otherwise, is it too much the emphasis we and they? Then there is violence. Or oh, community level, the national level, or this, you see, uh, violence, you see, come on the basis, too much sort of feeling, we and they. And then for short sightedness and also out of, I think, ignorance, I feel, and lack of compassion, then you see, feel or destroy your enemy. That's your victory. Actually, enemy mainly is a human being, so that part of our humanity. That's my view. That the people uh, really you see, feel interest or not, that is up to individual. <laughs> but my, so, or say, uh, my interest is express this. And I, I'm one 80 year, 81 year old person. Now, quite a lot of experiences. So I think experience is concerned. My, exper my experience is much bigger than your experiences. Well, you didn't know this, but I'm much older than you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, um, just as another question, as part of what you just said. Mm -hmm. So then, would it be fair to say that if one person is sick, that the whole body of humanity is hmm? sick. Hmm? And it is important to keep us healthy and to detoxify humanity in order to clean and purify our future. That's right. Uh, not very really clear, your question. She's, okay. Hmm? Hmm? Yes, we are a social animal someone uh, mentally sick, then uh, it spread easily. So in any way, it's a problem of human being must be solved by human ourselves, not relying on uh, prayer or these things. Uh, then also the problem related with the physical, problem which is related with mind, the problem related with physical, compare problem of mental state, the, the physical level is not superior. The mind is that superior. Obviously, 
is a, according to our own experience, mentally happy, sound. Then physical illness, you can subdue. Mentally, too much worry, anxiety, physical comfort will not sort of subdue the mental sort of suffering. So therefore, now time come, we have to pay more attention about our inner value and should know the method or the uh, right approach to strengthening our inner value. Inner value and a recognition, a recognition, as you point out, that we're all interconnected inside and to each other as brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. Right, 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 right. And the sense of protection of one another in our human dignity. This is our responsibility to care for one another. Right, right. This is from Joshua. Here, well, another question. Mm -hmm. I meditate. I like to meditate. Which meditation practice have you found to be the most fruitful? And what can you say about creating effective meditation practice? According to Indian tradition, uh, meditation, two types. One meditation, single-pointed meditation. Your mind remain a day of focusing a certain thing, or just, you see, remain the clarity of mind, just to remain there. So that is one kind of meditation. Uh, another meditation is analytical meditation, analyze, analyze. So uh, these meditation, uh, although the information or the, or the explanation come from religious text, but it's something applicable to our daily life. Now, for example, the scientists, the researchers, they actually implementing analytical meditation, investigate, investigate, investigate. Uh, so the subject the, for analytical meditation about matters or analytical meditation about our inner world. So, for me, uh, I must say I'm poor practitioner of meditation. <laughs> now, 81 years old, but progress, <laughs> not much, very, very little. <laughs> but better than none. <laughs> That's right, better than none. So, so therefore, for me, Analytical meditation is much more powerful. Oh, the single-pointed meditation, sometimes I describe like tranquilizer. <laughs> for, for a short moment, uh, a peace. But then, after that, again, you see, the problem is when we face some restlessness come. Yes. The analytical meditation, you see, analyze what the causes of the suffering, uh, external thing, internal thing, then you will, you will realize ultimately your own mental attitude. I think a two person, same problem, but feeling could be big differences. One person, same illness or same, same problem, but mentally there are some sort of ability to deal with that problem much happier. Do you believe that the that meditation uh, is also a way to calm humanity? Yes, yes. We all have the potential. You see this uh, warm-heartedness is the foundation of human survival, including our health more healthy mind, automatically more healthy uh, body. In that respect, I can tell you, according to my own experience, now uh, my sort of age, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 81 year old, and my life went through a lot of problems. Uh, 
There are a lot of sort of causes for anxiety or fear or anger even. But is my mind always calm? I think as a result of analytical meditation, according, uh, I'm Buddhist, Buddhist practitioner, according Buddhist sort of city method or technique. So, uh, I think you can judge my face. Uh, I told very ill. <laughs> so, so they have that, that nothing special medicine or nothing. Uh, I not, not even sort of yoga, yoga practice. I'm not much sort of, a little bit, otherwise it's not much. So mainly I found peace of mind. This really is, I makes think, important difference. for people to hear because they associate meditation and yoga with religion or uh, political background or race or color. But what you're saying is, is that it is a state of mind where we're returning to the inner peace that we're born with as children. And I think that is important for everyone to remember during such inflammatory times, violence, loss of illness, people becoming angry and full of fear, that we have to cool the system. Down. That's right. right. It's, it's about less hot, less heat, more cooling, more relaxation, but also th thoughtful That's right. and strategic. That's right. Conscious. So I believe, and also accordingly, I am telling or sharing with other people, the ultimate source already here. The only problem is whether we realize that or not, or uh, so exploit that potential within ourselves. Yes. From birth, we already have this, also the potential there. So we were just told that we're running out of time. Do we have time for more, or no, we have to stop? I'm going to just ask him one more one question, more. if one that's more. all right. Okay, one more. <laughs> that was a phone he rang. answered almost everything with all of your wonderful answers. I'm going to ask this one. This is Gudrun Fortner. Yes. <laughs> yes. He said, how can I still feel at peace with so much horror in this wonderful world? I need peace of mind. I'm losing it. It's understandable, uh, but again, uh, according to my own experience, you see, once you see that certain sort of what's it, the tragic situation happen, then not avoid, but look at more deeper way and from wider way, then there are some tragic things there. But at the same time, on this planet, many positive things, many sort of happy things there. If you look more wider perspective, then the frustration uh, from the tragic situation, that becomes something part of that, not whole. So when some problem, you see, uh, happen, if you look very closely, then it appears unbearable. The same problem look from distance, more wider perspective, then yes, there's a problem I have to face, but okay, uh, there are other very positive things there, so uh, I should not sort of, uh, I should say, because of that, feel low hope. hope. There are. Now, if you see the humanity is really very negative, then we don't, we don't need any worry about population increasing. <laughs> so we have to keep decade by decade. To keep oh. the world going. Oh, hope right. is very, very essential. Self-confidence. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.